What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today we're going to look at part two of the Gaja Classic Pro series in which I have taken the Gaja Classic Pro and I've modded the mess out of it. So the video today, I'm just going to be unpacking the different modifications I've performed on the Gaja Classic Pro. We're going to look at their efficiency, whether or not I like them, how difficult they were to install, so that you can kind of have an idea if you're wanting to do something similar at home with your own Gaja Classic or Gaja Classic Pro. Let's go ahead and jump straight in. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you each of the mods, so I'm going to have to take the top off my machine. First thing that I did, the, the easier things that are just you buy and you slap on, is I got the bottomless porta filter from Shades of Coffee. I switched out the basket as well as the screen. So those are just simple mods you can just throw onto your machine. I got the low profile drip tray, which is also something you just take and replace. Um, and then I also got this tube, which will allow for the drips coming out of the solenoid to go straight into your tray. So let me put that in real quick because I forgot to prior to shooting. So there's the nozzle here. You just kind of put it up in. Oh, where is it? There we are. You just push it on up in. And that way you don't have just random drips coming around. You can go straight into the drip tray. So those are kind of the easy, cheaper, anyone can do them, no maintenance necessary type of uh, modifications you can do to your machine. Now the things that get a little bit more dicey happen inside. So as you can see from this angle right here, I have this box that I've added and this box that I've added. Now let me tell you about these boxes. This right here is a PID. So the Gaja Classic Pro does not come with a PID installed, meaning you don't have control over temperature. This right here is literally a dimmer switch that you would put into a household. So a, a light switch on your wall that you can dim and uh, brighten the lights. Literally that's what that is right there. And I'll tell you in a second what that's for. Now, when you look inside the machine, there's a couple more things that I did. Right here is the overpressure valve. And so inside of this brass, I have put a different spring. So the spring that comes with the machine is rated for 12 bars of pressure. So as you probably know from my video on the truth of espresso is the overpressure valve, all that does is once the machine registers a certain pressure, and in this case the spring is 12, is rated for 12 bars, once it reads 12 bars, it starts to shunt the flow coming from the pump so that the pressure won't go above 12 bars. So that's what the overpressure valve is doing. Now what I just showed you is the overpressure valve, that top part, and what I've done is I've taken out that spring that's rated for 12 bars, and I've replaced it with a spring rated for six and a half bars. Now you might be asking, well, what, what does that look like? What does that mean? I brought the springs so I can show you what I mean. So whenever you get that OPV spring, which I got from Shades of Coffee, and I paid for all of this, by the way, that you get different springs that have different strengths. So if you watch closely, when I push this one down, pretty hard to push down. I can't quite get it all the way, right? Then you have this one, which when I do it, look at that, with one hand, I can just go all the way down, right? So what are the difference between these two? This one's a nine bar spring, this one's a five bar spring. And then you have the 12 bar spring, which I've taken out. See that, I can barely get it compressed, all right? These are the different springs, and then what you do is you take this part, which I'm going to go back to this handheld camera. That right there is this, okay? So this is what we just looked at in the machine. What you do is you take a spring, the spring is inside, you'll just take it out and replace it with another, and that effectively changes the OPV of your machine. So what your machine is going to tolerate before it starts to shunt flow. Now when I say shunt flow, all that means is, and if you remember from that video, which I will, I will just go ahead and link right there if you're confused. When I say shunt flow, I'm saying the, the pump in here, which is a vibratory pump, pump, it's pumping water out at a fixed rate, all right? And that fixed rate is going to hit your ground, okay? So what's gonna happen is the fineness of those grounds and how tightly they're packed together is going to create resistance or pressure. And that pressure is going to increase, and once it hits about 12 bars, when that, with that original spring in there, it's going to shunt the flow down into your drip tray, okay? Easy peasy, all right? Might be a little confusing, that's why I've linked that video for you to watch. So, going back to here, that's what I've done, is I've taken 
taken this, take the tube out, take a wrench, unscrew that, and just replace the screws. So that is one of the easier do-it-yourself mods you can do to the actual, the actual machine itself without having to do anything else. If you do that one mod, you now have a machine that costs $449 or whatever it might be where you're located, and you've bought a spring, you just replaced it. No big deal, right? And so that uh, is one of the mods that I have done with this machine. The second mod, and definitely the most arduous mod, is the PID I installed. All right, so this allows me, and I did a PID for uh, this, this controls both the steam wand and the group head. So what this does is it allows me to control the temperature of both of them. So through this screen, I'm able to set the temperature for the steam and for the, the group head, and it maintains the temp a lot better. So I'm gonna show you some of what that looks like. Um, gets a little intense. All right, so here we go. So what I've added in here is this, which controls the group head, and this, which controls the steam, all right? So the, there's a ton of wires, as you see. This is kind of a, a maze of wires. It's because how many times I had to go in and come out. Um, but there are things you have to do, like you have to piggyback power here. You've got to piggyback power down here where the plug is. Wait, there we are, right down here. Um, so there's a lot of plugging and playing. There's a lot of, and there's another one down here. That mod right there took me about five hours to complete, and it is not a cheap mod. I will have in the caption the prices for all the mods that I have uh, that I've done, and again, I paid for the machine and for all of these modifications, so um, I'm putting the prices I paid for down in the caption below and where I got them. So the PID took me about five hours, um, and as you see from the back, there's quite a bit of wires that have to go through grommets into the back. So it's a little, it's a, uh, uh, if you're not comfortable with wires, if you're not comfortable rerouting things, I would not recommend this. It is, it is kind of, I guess, an advanced um, modification to perform. Uh, as I said, it took me about five hours. Um, but, and, and, the, and the manual that comes with Shades of Coffee, which is where I got mine, is about 80 pages long. So it, it, it's an arduous process. But if you are set on keeping your Gaja Classic Pro, I highly recommend doing it, even though the cost is high, because now you have control without having to waste water from temp surfing. You don't have to guess what the temperature is. You have the PID telling you what it is and you can set the temperature at any place, right? You can go from 90 degrees Celsius to 105 Celsius and you can offset the estimated temperature loss that's going to happen from the boiler to the group head. So I do have, have an eight degree Celsius differential. So when I program this to 96, for instance, I'm really programming it to 104 Celsius so that by the time it hits the group, I have a, more, a better or more accurate uh, reading of what that temperature is going to be. So again, if you are not competent in traversing all of these wires, which I'll show you one more time what all this looks like, and again, mine is a little bit more messy, I'd say, than, than a lot of the people doing modifications, and it's because, well, I'm having a baby this Saturday, and uh, by the time you're watching this video, it's probably already out, but um, time's been a little pressed. So, um, I did not, you know, zip tie and get all the cords, and I, I do have them off the boiler so that they're not burning, but other than that, it might look a little more intimidating than a lot of people's machines. So again, if you're not confident in your ability to traverse the innards of this machine, I might not recommend doing this, However, it is an incredibly important mod, in my opinion, for consistent espresso with as little water waste as possible, okay? All right, so we have that one sort of out of the way, and obviously I'm gonna demo all of these things here in a bit. Uh, the, the last one I'm gonna kind of talk about is this funky looking guy right here, all right? So the, the light switch, the dimmer. What is going on here? This is actually the, Mm, well, it's the second easiest mod behind the OPV spring, but it's actually a very easy mod, although it looks intense. So all this is doing, just so that you have an understanding of what's going on with this modification, which also can be done with any vibratory pump. So if you've got a Breville, a Bre a Breville infuser or something like that where it has a vibratory pump, you can do this modification. So this is not Gaja Classic Pro specific. This PID is, is Gaja Classic Pro specific. I bought it from Shades of Coffee and it's made for this machine. This modification, however, can be done with any vibratory pump. All that this mod is doing, just so you have an understanding, is I'm taking a wire that connects the brew switch to the pump. I'm taking that wire, I'm unplugging it from the pump. And then I am taking, the. there are two wires that feed in and out of the light switch. What I'm doing is I'm taking one wire and I splice it with the wire I've unplugged from the pump. 
and then the other wire that's coming out of the, the light box, I am plugging into where the one from the brew, brew switch originally was in the pump. So I've just, I've completed the circuit, I've just added something in between. So whereas it went from brew pump to, or uh, brew switch to the vibratory pump, I now have it brew switch to dimmer to vibratory pump, okay? So all that I'm doing, or all that's happening with this mod, so when you switch the brew switch on, the power goes through the dimmer, and then the dimmer, we're able to increase or decrease the power going to the vibratory pump. So what that means is you have control over the piston releasing the water. Hey, you know what that means? That means you've got flow control by extension of power control. Now how awesome does that sound, right? All right, so now we're like an X-Men or something. We are controlling the flow with the electrical currents from our fingertips. I am Storm, the goddess of espresso machines. Okay, so yeah, we're, now let's go ahead and play with this. I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna show you just once more. So back here, this is how I have it routed. I put, this is just a light box. This is literally from Home Depot. This was uh, six bucks. This right here was, I don't know, seven bucks. Space plate was $2. And then I put little mounting strips, which are just adhesives. And then I took, uh, this is a grounding wire, which I've grounded inside. And these two black wires right here, let me grab my screwdriver to really point it out. These two black wires, all right? Those two are from the light switch. And then as you see here, the wires weren't long enough, so I had to buy some 14 AWG wire. I had to um, strip it and crimp it to this wire. And then those wires come on in and they go up here and they go all the way down to the bottom where the vibratory pump is, which is right down here. Okay, so down there. because obviously the pump's uh, connected to the OPV. All right, so, oh, I dropped a spring in there. Easter egg. All right. All right, so let's, uh, let's fire this bad boy up. You'll see how fast it heats up and you're going to be able to see exactly what's going on. Actually, before I do that, I wanna talk about the woes I had in doing these mods. So the, the reason this video took so long is because there are a lot of woes. One of the woes is my OPV snapped. Look at this, look at this, it snapped. So I had to order another one. I had it rush delivered from Whole Latte Love. Um, uh, it, it wasn't that expensive to overnight the parts, but I had to do that. Um, this is the little nipple that's inside of the OPV, and that's around what you put the spring, okay? So this is what that looks like right there. You have a tube coming into here and a tube coming into here, all right? And then uh, on top of all that, <laughs> this one's just for, uh, for funsies. I, when I uh, put installed the PID and I turned it all on, it wasn't working, and I was really bummed. It wasn't heating up. I had, and the lights came on, everything came on, and I was so bummed. I emailed um, Mr. Shades himself, and uh, he got back to me really quickly and was, you know, asked what was going on, and I was like, oh man, I, I did everything, and in fact, that night, I said I took five hours, I really took eight and a half, and it's because I undid almost everything and redid it and tried it again. It wasn't heating up. I was so annoyed. So I emailed Mr. Shades, and he uh, responded, uh, he had me take a picture of some stuff, and he goes, uh, let me see what temperature you're set at. Turns out this doofus was set at 9.5 Celsius instead of 95 Celsius. My eyes at 4 a.m. couldn't see that there was a period in there. So I wasted so many hours on something so dumb and trivial. But uh, I did get it right the first try, so it's not that difficult if you are, you know, if you have done mods before or if, you, you know, if you're good with your hands or whatever. Um, it did take me about four or five hours. Um, I guess you can count the other three and a half because Dum Dum didn't set the temperature correctly, but that is, um, yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and put this top back on. Be safe. See, these are grounding wires, being safe. Uh, we're going to put this lid back on, and then I'll heat it up, and we'll watch that bad boy heat up, and we'll pull a couple shots. Actually, I put the top back on, but there's one other thing I wanted to show you that I brought. Um, it is important if you're doing the dimmer modification that you get a really cheap dimmer that is not made for LED. Uh, if you're looking at dimmers and they're over 10 US dollars, don't get it. I made that mistake. This is a $30 dimmer that has uh, the, the uh, ability to be a three-way. You want a one-way, a single pole. That's what you want is a single pole, something that's five, seven, eight bucks. This one was $6 after tax, okay? This one was like $27.99. Um, and I bought it because I, was, I just wanted something and the, the Lowe's was out. 
and I just bought it. Um, this did not work. And I tried to troubleshoot and I was working with a couple of people. Uh, shout out to P-Web and Anarcho from Espresso Aficionado Discord for helping me late last night. Yes, I finished this last night because the dimmer wasn't working. Um, this one, as you see, has three wires. Uh, it, it just isn't gonna work. Essentially, there's too much going on in here. The price is justified because there's more stuff going on. Uh, for this, since the dimmer is not made for the machine, you need something very specific. So get a single pole dimmer, okay? Um, and I'll put down below what I use, uh, what Anarcho suggests, and what P-Web suggests. And those are usernames on Discord. Uh, but there are three that I know do work, so I'm going to link those in the caption below. But this is what that's looking like. Then I just housed it, grounded it. Here's the grounding wire. This one has three, whereas this one just has two. Anyway. All right, so now we're going to hit this machine on. Boom. All right, so from this ang angle, you're seeing this uh, start to heat up, and it's going to heat up quite rapidly. And again, I have it in Celsius, and it's 8 degrees Celsius below what is actual. So the ambient temperature of the boiler at start showed it was at like 15, 14, 15, which makes sense because plus 8, that's going to be room temp. So I have it offset to take into account how much heat is being lost in the process from the boiler to the group head so it's uh, more accurate. But as you see, we're already to 40 Celsius. And then uh, there's a menu in here and you're able to program whatever temperature you're wanting for the group and for the steam. My steam is set at, I think, uh, 140 Celsius maybe. I can't quite remember, 130 something. And then uh, group head, I, I can't remember where it's at. So we're about to see where I have it set right now. All right, so we're pretty much at temp. All right, so let's show you what this flow control can do. All right, so what I'm going to do to demonstrate it, so I'm gonna take out the group. I'm gonna put a decanter right here. And this will keep heating up. It's gonna heat up probably to about 100, 101 or so. Um, it, it, I don't know why, but it does that every time after I uh, turn it on, it goes all the way up. And then after I run, uh, like clear out the group, it goes back down to the, the temperature I set it at. Anyway, so don't worry about that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is uh, take my Smart Espresso profiler and I'm going to show you how I'm controlling the flow and how fast I can get the flow and how slow. All right, so I've got this ready. So what I'm going to do, I have this handheld on my app so you can see what's going on. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn on the brew switch and nothing's gonna happen until I turn the dimmer on because the dimmer is not allowing the power to go through it and to the pump to allow water, uh, to, to allow the pump to actuate. So you're not gonna hear the pump turn on when I hit the switch until I open the dimmer. So watch from this angle as I do that. And then once it comes on, I'll show, we'll switch over to the phone so that you can see um, the, uh, the flow rate coming out. So I'll be tracking flow rate grams per second. So what you wanna see from the phone is this side right here. That shows flow grams per second. So you're gonna see it coming out and I'll move at different positions so you can kind of see how that works. All right, so I'm gonna turn it on. Look, nothing's going. This is just purging out some of the steam that's in there, but the pump hasn't actuated yet until now. You hear that? All right, so I've got the pump actuated. I have it on the lowest setting. So let's see where it levels out. There's obviously going to be noise as it's dropping randomly, but it looks like it's around in between one and a half and two. Now I'm going to turn it up all the way. So you heard that pump really start to turn on. Look at that. All right, so let's see where we top out at. What is the highest water debit? Or what is the peak water debit? Let's see. All right, it's peaking at, looks like around nine. Nine is the highest. Now I'm gonna turn it all the way back down. Look at that. And I'm gonna turn it back up. And then we're gonna to switch to the side angle so you can see what I'm doing. I'm literally just turning the dimmer. See that? And I'm gonna turn it up, listen. You hear that dimmer? Uh, I mean, you hear the pump crank up and it goes down little, 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 up. Little, 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 little. And I turn it off and it's done. Boom. All right. So with this mod, you have flow control. Isn't that exciting? I am stoked on it. I know you are too. Um, so let's go and pull some shots and then I'm gonna make a cappuccino just for fun. Cause the one mod that people I know are thinking, why didn't you do this mod? 
I did not do the Steam One mod because there's no need to do the Steam One mod. This Steam One is perfectly fine, and I'm gonna show you. We're gonna pour a little something with it. It's completely fine, especially now with the PID in place, you're not losing that steam power, okay? You're gonna have it consistently being at the temperature you really need, so you're not gonna be losing a lot of it. You don't have to temp surf, you don't have to guess uh, 10 seconds before, whatever it might be. You can just get it going. I'm gonna dump this water out. I'm gonna refill with fresh water, which is a question I got on the last one. Why can't you just dump this water back in? Think about it, this is going through the group head, which no matter how much you clean it, there's gonna be some particulates left in there. You don't wanna put that back through the machine. You don't wanna do that, use clean water. Use this if you wanna not waste water. Let this sit out, uh, cool off, use it in uh, a plant or something like that, I don't know, but don't, I would not recommend putting it back in your machine. Nah. Maybe make ramen with it, I don't know. All right, I'm gonna dump and reset. All right, so let's get a shot pulling. Um, I've got the beans in the hopper. All right, so let's get this going. I've of course got my shot collar and always WDT, tamper. All right, and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like underneath, what that extraction's going to look like with my flow control. I'm not trying to pull a good shot here. You've already seen different profiles on how to do this. What I'm showing you is how responsive this modification is. And to be honest with you, it's more responsive than the Slayer mod on the Breville Dual Boiler, which you all know I love. It's, it is more, it's genuinely more responsive than that. And you're about to see just how responsive this is. So buckle up. All right, I don't know why I was about to toss that away like I was at a bar. All right. So we're WDT, and y'all know how I like to WDT. I start at the very bottom. I'm not worried about cosmetic scratches on the basket. And I slowly spin and come up, spin and come up, do a revolution, spin and come up. All right, now I'm at the very top, boom. Take this collar off, hold the sides. I'm just gonna tap settle, put this in, find it, tamp down. Now that tamp is really tight, I don't, I don't polish. That was so I didn't suction the, cut, the puck out. All right, so I'm gonna place this in. This is really awkward from this angle. There we go. Get it in, tear the scale. Now, I'm gonna hold this so that you can see what's happening underneath, um, and then I'll start the, the shot. So I have the dimmer off, I'm gonna click go, and then I'll start the dimmer. So I'm gonna start the time, and uh, yeah, we're gonna see how this goes. And... All right, so I'm gonna blast it. Blast it until I see the base fill. Okay, now I'm turning it down. Now watch. See how slow that's going? Now I'm gonna blast it again. Watch how responsive this is. Now I turn it down. Look at that. Blast, turn it down. Blast, turn it down. Blast, turn it down. It's so fun. Blast, turn it down. Blast, turn it down. One more time, and turn it down. All right. All right. Um, yeah, so that's fun. That shot's probably awful. But as you saw, incredibly responsive. I blasted it to fill the puck, which is what I like to do. I like to do my puck saturation with a high flow rate, meaning what's coming out is, you know, eight or nine milliliters per second. And that I've found evenly saturates the puck as good as possible. And then I slowed it down right when I saw the puck saturate on the bottom. I slowed down all the way to uh, where it was almost off. Okay. And that goes, what, what do we see? About one and a half or two, about two grams a second, milliliters a second. And I let it sit there and drip, 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 and then I went all the way up and all the way back. And I was toggling it, and the flow was doing this. And the reason that is, is because the power that was routing uh, through the dimmer was allowing the, the piston to go up and down and up and down and up and down, so the water was going fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow. So, complete flow control. I could sit here and uh, completely profile a shot however I'm really wanting to. Now. There is a modification I did not do to this machine that will improve your uh, consistency and, and all this good stuff, uh, potentially, and that is the pressure gauge mod. You can, you know, in between the OPV and the, the, the group, you can, or not the OPV, between the pump and the group, you can put a, a pressure gauge and you can have it mounted on the side of your machine. You can see it, you know, a needle gauge, to a manometer essentially, so that you can look at where you're at as you're pressure profiling. Obviously that will help. Now, uh, before I pour a drink, I want to kind of kind of conclude here and then I'll pour a drink and we'll do a little outro. But the qu I guess the question here is, 
it, are these mods worth it, right? So if you're, are you, are you in the, the, the market for an espresso machine, you're looking at this like, wow, that's incredible. I want to get that. I want to have all that control. And on a cheap machine, a $450 machine, that's incredible. Well, slow your roll. Let's, let's take a second. Let's think. Let's breathe. Let's do yoga. Let's do Pilates. Let's do um, the potty. Um, uh, I just said potty. Um, let's, do, let's do all the things. So when you're thinking about getting a machine, you have a budget, right? Well, the, yes, this is $450. But once you put all the modifications in, that automatically brings a price up to about 800. And I'll put all the prices below. That's just off the top of my head. It could be more, it could be just a little less, plus or minus 50 maybe. Um, and then you also have to take into account the man hours to, or the manual hours to put in all of the modifications, um, which is quite a bit. And then if you want that pressure gauge mod, it might even go up to $1,000. And then on top of all that, you have a tiny boiler in this machine. And on top of that, the thermal retention is not as good as some of the other machines out there. So just to be honest with you, if you have a Gaja Classic Pro already, I recommend these mods, absolutely, I do. You'll, you'll be able to find all of these online. The one, the one mod that's difficult and there's not a ton of info on is the dimmer mod, but that is something I'll link resources I use in the caption below, so hopefully it will be kind of a, a Bible for people who are wanting to modify their Gaja Classic Pro. Now, with all these mods, you're gonna be able to get some incredible tasting shots, um, but again, it's a lot of work to modify it. I spent uh, two nights where I started at 10 p.m. and didn't go to bed till about 4 or 5 a.m. Uh, modifying this. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. You got to want it. You know, you got you to gotta, gotta, uh, risk it for the biscuit. You got you to gotta want it to rhyme with something with that, and I don't have a rhyme for you. Um, so anyway... There's that. Let's, let's pour a cappuccino for all of you kooks that watch this uh, strictly for the latte art, um, which, you know, I applaud. Cool. All right, so I'm going to reset, and we'll get... Uh, I'm going to have to turn the machine around to properly steam. It's going to be hard to... All right, so I'm going to pull the shot, then I'm going to get the steam wand ready and uh, steam some milk. So you can see me uh, blasting it once more. And shot on, dimmer on, and I'm blasting it. I'm going to wait until we have full saturation, then I'm going to cut down. Boom. Cut all the way down. I'm gonna slowly just bring up the pressure, or the flow, because y'all know it's flow times resistance equals pressure. All right, so now I got it going. And right when I'm done, I'm going to cut it off. So that's good right there. Now I'm turning on the steam, and you're gonna see this heat up to where it needs to be. I'm gonna pull my shot over here. It's gonna do a little leak for a second, but. Here's my shot to pour into. All right, so let's get this milk steamed up. I'm gonna go over the drip tray so that I have that clearance right here. And I'm gonna turn it on at halfway and a quarter. All right, here we go. There you go, you nerds. All righty. So that is the Gaja Classic Pro Mod Edition. Let me turn the steam function off. The Mod Edition, all right? So we've got the PID, we've got the dimmer switch, we've got the OPV spring in there. I opted not to do the pressure gauge mod. Uh, we've got the uh, basket, the naked portafilter, the screen, the low, uh, low, profile mod, uh, low profile drip tray, and uh, yeah, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got a GCP or a GC and you are into mods, uh, leave a comment below if you think you're gonna do some of these. If you are thinking about getting an espresso machine, let me hear your thoughts on the machine itself. Again, I have zero connection or affiliation with Gaja. Bought this with Patreon funds, which is incredible. And I'm so excited to be able to give this Frankenstein machine for free to someone in my Patreon. That's how it works. As I grow, as the Patreon grows, I'm gonna be able to buy more and more equipment so that I can be unbiased in my reviews or in my modifications or in my opinions on different things. And then because I use Patreon funds, I just give it right back to them. So some lucky Patreon is gonna get a fully modded worth a thousand dollar espresso machine um, that I've th that's been in this video so uh, if you are, are interested in getting into these giveaways into contributing to this channel helping me with you know the fees for filming the fees for um, getting equipment uh, obtaining equipment and doing these reviews for you or doing just 
any of the videos that I do, please consider joining. We have a cool Discord where we chat and have a cool community that's growing there, almost 300 strong now. So I uh, just want to say thank you for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I put a lot of work into these videos, and it would just mean a lot. I uh, appreciate you coming through. The next time you see me, I'm going to be a double daddy. I'm going to be daddy uh, two, two daddy. I'm going to have a second kid, right? So uh, until then, um, uh, enjoy your, may your espresso flow like the rivers from the mountains, and may your milk be silky like a tie that you shouldn't get water on. Thank you. Cheers.